So today we're going to be looking at the high performance Samsung 980 Pro SSD, which is a PCIe 4 SSD with read speeds of up to 7000 megabytes a second. Now this is a very popular and fast drive. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing it in an Alienware laptop. We're going to be benchmarking it and testing the temperatures with inside a confined space like a laptop like this to see how well this drive performs and what the temperatures are like. Now the first thing I do want to talk about is when you're buying one of these drives, there's two different versions available for each of the capacities. A bare drive that I've bought here and also one with a heatsink. Now if you're buying this for your desktop and your desktop doesn't come with a pre-built heatsink onto the actual SSD slot, by all means buy the one with the heatsink. Never buy the heatsink model for a laptop. They will never fit. The heatsink is just too thick. So with most laptops you will have a heatsink installed, at least on your primary drive and you'll be able to reuse that if you're replacing an SSD. Now with my Alienware, I've got two SSD slots and this is gonna be installed in my secondary slot. And unfortunately, Dell don't provide an actual heatsink for that secondary slot. So in my case, I've just picked up a very cheap copper heatsink plate that you can buy pretty much anywhere, which would be pretty much the same job as the Dell provided model. So first things first, let's open it up and take a look what we get in the box. So here's my SSD, really not much in here. There's no screw, so you usually use the screw that's provided with your laptop or desktop. And we've also got an installation guide. Very basic. And that's it. Now this is, as I say, is a two terabyte model. The good thing about the two terabyte and below with these drives is they're single sided. So all the actual chips are on the front of the actual SSD. There's nothing on the rear, meaning no matter how flat this sits to your laptop, it's going to fit. Some of the four terabyte models have the chips on the back. So be very careful if you're trying to buy a four terabyte SSD. I don't know of any gen four SSDs of four terabyte and higher without chips on the back. And that won't fit in a lot of laptops. But these two terabytes are perfect. So we're gonna install that into our secondary slot now. Now, firstly, I've opened my Anywhere laptop, very straightforward on this model, but before you do that, please make sure you shut your laptop or your PC down and unplug it. Now, once I remove the actual base plate to expose all the inner workers of my laptop, my first job is to unplug the battery so that I know that it, everything's safe that I'm working on. Now, you can see here, we've got two SSD bays side by side. My primary drive is already plugged in. I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna plug in my 980 Pro in that secondary slot. We come in at a very slight angle, we push it into the slot and then drop it down into place and just make sure it's fully seated in. And you'll see when it's seated in place because the SSD will sit against the mounting lug. Now I'm then gonna install my copper heatsink plate and I'm gonna screw the SSD down. And that's it. We plug the battery back in, we put the base plate back on and we reboot the actual laptop. Now once you get back into Windows, because this is only a secondary drive, I don't need to install Windows again. But what we will need to do in order to see the SSD, we need to go into disk management. Now when you load up disk management, it will automatically tell you that there's another disk, follow the prompts, then you'll see your two terabyte drive shown in your list of disks, right click on the actual drive itself and do a simple format and follow the prompts. It's as simple as that. And then you now got a working secondary SSD. Now in order to test these drives, I'm running Crystal Disk Mark. I'm also gonna be running Crystal Disk Info. Now with the crystal disk mark, that's gonna benchmark the drive, but it also really hammers it to obviously increase the temperatures, which is what we wanna to do to see how hot this drive gets. Now I've extended it to seven read and write tests for all the different Q depths to really make this quite a torturous test for this SSD so we can see what the temperatures are actually like. And whilst running the actual tests themselves with crystal disk mark, you'll see that we get very close to the rated 7,000 read speeds. We get 6,970, which is very impressive. Now the sequential write speed is just over 5,000 megabytes a second, which is massively faster than any Gen 3 drive and pretty much on par with the top drives for Gen 4s. So using these drives in day-to-day -day use is gonna feel incredibly snappy. And if you are copying files from one drive to another, you're gonna be limited by the, the source file that you're copying across with the speed of these drives. Now, when it came to the temperatures inside of this laptop, which is pretty much a worst case scenario for an SSD being inside of a laptop, even with the small heat sink that we get with it, now I'm very surprised with the results here. From a lot of the information I'd heard before I bought this drive, they said it was quite a hot running drive. But in my testing, in this torch test of crystal disk mark, the maximum I reached was 60 degrees Celsius, 
That's really quite incredible. The Western Digital SN850 that we had recently in the same chassis of laptop, that scored over 70 degrees in the same test. So that leads me to the conclusion. Overall, this is an absolutely solid Gen 4 drive. It runs a lot cooler than I expected, means that it works really well in a slim laptop like this. And lastly, being Samsung, you know you're getting a quality product, and they even back that up with a five year warranty, making this an absolutely excellent buy. So as usual, put your questions in the comment sections down below and I will get back to you. And lastly, thank you for watching.